So we are going to Emmanuel, examine Emmanuel's abdomen, okay? So Emmanuel, we can sell water and pan so why? I'd like you to lie on the bed, eh? And you can see the bed is far, as a child, it's much higher than he is and he can't climb up. So we'll have to help him. Very good. So always remember, help your patients too. They might also even be in a lot of pain, so they need your help more, more than that. Make sure he's comfortable, position his head in the center. Make sure he's lying in the center with his arms by his side. And you explain to him, maybe show you from why, what you're going to do. And then you can expose him. And your why? Okay. And make sure you've exposed everything as far as possible. So up the chest as well as the down to the inguinal region. Like this, yes, he is up and down. Okay, good, okay. And be aware of that they are human beings, they need their privacy. So where you can get a little cloth, you can spread it there so that they're not exposed unnecessarily. But here at least you can expose down to the inguinal region. And then we can start our examination from here. We're going to examine the abdomen in this child. And um, before I'll start, I just have to make sure that the child is comfortable. And I'll ask the child um, if he's having any pain in any part of his abdomen. We have no baby, oh yeah. Okay, so he says he has no pain in the abdomen. And then I'll just tell him, you always have to tell the child what you're going to do. If the child understands, then you speak to the child. Okay. Inti, maybe, maybe me say I can't wait for you. Why? Any of you? Why? Okay, all right. So make sure the child is lying comfortable with the arms by the side. Okay. And, um... As with all other systems, you have to start with inspection, then you go to palpation, then percussion, and then last of all, auscultation. And you can tell a lot just by inspecting without even touching. <coughs> okay, so on inspecting the abdomen, I'll be looking for any distension, any visible masses, or abnormal peristalsis, or any other lesions on the abdomen. This child's abdomen is flat, and it's moving very well with respiration, as you can see. There are some old scars in the epigastrium and periumbilical region. Um, you look at the umbilicus, the umbilicus is flat. If it's a baby, you'd look for any redness or any discharge coming from the umbilicus. There are no obvious masses. So I've asked him already, and I'll just ask him again before I touch. Um, we have no baby or yeah? Yeah, baby. Okay, very good. So now I'll be able to touch. Make sure that. Um, your arms are, your hands, sorry, your hands are warm before you touch. Otherwise, there'll be the reflex, there'll be some constriction of the muscles. Okay, all right. So I'll just palpate superficially just for areas of tenderness. And whilst I'm palpating, I'll look at the child's face to see if there's any sign of pain because you don't want to inflict any. And you realize that I've exposed the abdomen quite well, just below the nipple and just below the inguinal region so that I can see the abdomen clearly. So this is superficial palpation and I'm examining the child. I'm looking at the child's face for any evidence of any tenderness. He's not showing any sign of tenderness. So there's no tenderness on superficial palpation. Okay, and I use the flat of my hand to do the superficial palpation, as you can see. I use the flat of my hand 
and I did not dig into my hand. Sometimes on superficial palpation, you'll be able to even feel some masses. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so now I'm going to do deep palpation. And on deep palpation, you're now going to um, palpate for any masses like the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, or any other masses. So I'm going to palpate for the liver. Okay. So I'll start right down the right iliac fossa. You can see I'm going deeper. And sometimes with children, they might be crying. In that case, you time your deep palpation with inspiration because their abdominal muscles relax more when they're taking in a breath. So you can time it with inspiration and you go deep. So I'm going up, palpating for a liver. You can just feel a liver here, just touching my index finger when he's um, breathing in. So I'll just Okay, this is up to here. And I will guide to, I'll just measure. Sorry, I shouldn't take it off yet. I'll just measure how the um, size of the liver. So starting from the mid-clavicular line, which is here. Okay, so in the, in the mid-clavicular line, just below the sternal, the intercostal, sorry, the intercostal, just below the ribs, the subcostal margin. So in the mid-clavicular line, okay, that's the tape, okay, straight, just below the subcostal margin. Okay. Now I'll palpate for my liver, which I found here. Measure in centimeters. So the liver is enlarged by six centimeters below the costal margin. And now that I think it's a liver, I have to make sure that it is a liver before I take my hand off. I'll feel the edge. The edge feels smooth. The surface is smooth as well. And it's soft. So the consistency and the surface. And then just to make sure, if it's a liver, as he's breathing, breathing, I can't get above it. Okay, I can't get above the liver. And also, when I percuss, just to confirm that the liver is enlarged. Okay, it's down here compared to, to here. So it's dull over the liver. Right. And then, um, just to make sure that it is, that the liver is enlarged, you can percuss from up down to get the span of the liver. So percuss from here. Sorry. So, you can tell the difference. This space is dull. So you can measure the span of the liver from here down to the edge of the liver. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to percuss, sorry, I'm going to palpate for any other masses. The other important mass is the spleen. Okay, so the spleen enlarges towards the right mm -hmm. iliac fossa. So I'll percuss, sorry, I'll palpate from the right iliac fossa upwards mm -hmm. towards the spleen. And all the time I'm watching the child's face to make sure I'm not inflicting any serious pain. I'm not moving my fingers too, you know, too um, far between so that I don't miss if the spleen might be enlarged and I move it too far between. Okay. Continue. All right. 
Okay. So now I can feel a mass in the left, on the left side, okay. Now, um, how do I know that it's a spleen? I can feel a mass. Okay. The mass moves with respiration, breathing. Let me guess it. Uh -huh. It moves down with respiration. It's hitting my finger with respiration. I'm trying to get between the spleen and the subcostal margin. I cannot get above it. And now I'm trying to feel for the splenic notch, which is in the medial aspect. <clears throat> I can just about palpate the splenic notch here. Now also to get the size of the spleen, still the mid-clavicular line, this is the mid-clavicular line, I will now, I will now, this thing is here. Get the look for the how enlarged the spleen is. Down here, it's six centimeters below the costal margin. The surface is also smooth and it's soft in consistency. And then the spleen, let's see. If it's spleen, um I'm palpating from down to see the difference. Sorry, I'm percussing. Um, if it's spleen, it will be down over, over the spleen. If it's a kidney, it will be resonant over the kidney. Yeah, so it's dull on percussion. It's dull on percussion. It's dull on percussion over the spleen. Okay, all right. And then the other difference is if it's a kidney, it's by manually palpable. Okay. All right. Now, um, so I've, I'm, I've palpated the lip, I've palpated the spleen. I'm going to try and palpate any other masses on deep palpation. There are no other masses. I'm going to try and palpate for the kidneys. So, no, no, just like which should be bimanually palpable. It's enlarged. There's nothing, you know, both the right side and the left side. There are no kidneys palpable. Okay. Just think. And then for any bladder, if the bladder is distended, if the bladder is distended, it will be done on percussion. This is very resonant, so you can see the bowel. You could even notice the difference between the bowel and this place that was dull over the spleen. Okay, so let's try it and palpate for the bladder if it's distended. It's resonant. This place is dull. So I think he has a he has a distended bladder. Prince Odo. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> he says he feels like passing you. So we've got a distended bladder as well. I hope to finish so that we can relieve him of this discomfort. Okay, all right. And whilst I'm palpating, I've exposed the inguinal area, so I'm looking at the hernial orifices also, palpating for any hernia. Okay. You can ask him, if he's a cooperative older child, you can ask him to cough and then you palpate. Boa, cough. <coughs> okay, and cough, Bill. <coughs> okay, <coughs> okay. There's no impulse. Obviously, if it's a young child, you won't be able to ask them to cough, but you'll be able to notice if there's any hernia. Okay. Now we've done our palpation. Now we're going to percuss to examine for any fluid. If there's any, see if there's any free fluid in the abdomen. Okay. All right. Obviously, it's, the abdomen is not distended, but there could still be a little bit of fluid. So we start from the midline. We're going to percuss. And when you're percussing, don't percuss high up. Because if there's a liver or a spleen, you get false results. And we know this boy has an enlarged liver and spleen. So lower down in the midline, okay. We know he's got a bladder, so I'll go a bit higher here. So it's resonant. Okay, this place is very dull. 
So what I'll do is I'm going to ask him to turn over that that one change it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, all right. So just let him wait a few seconds if there's fluid the fluid will settle down so this thing should become resonant now okay i'll just see if this place has become down no there, so there's no change this place is still dull compared to this place which is resonant so he has no free fluid you can repeat it on the other side if you want to. Okay, so this space is really dull. And in that, we can ask him to turn over. Wait a few seconds. Keep your finger where the dullness was. Okay. It's still dull compare okay compared to here <laughs> it's more resonant here okay good all right now um finally we'll auscultate for any bow sounds okay so using the the high pitch so use the diaphragm and just put it down yeah. You might have to wait a few seconds. Okay, yes, he has normal bowel sounds. Good. Okay. Now, in, um, in children, don't forget, obviously, to complete your abdominal examination, you should also inspect the genitalia. And in all children, you need a chaperone, whether it's a baby or an older child. It can be the parent or it can be a nurse. Uh -huh. But you have to be quite sensitive because um, you should be aware of the, of the privacy. So obviously if it's a public place, you should, have to, you should cover the child appropriately before you inspect the genitalia as well. And the genitalia, if it's a boy, you'll be looking at the, um, at the testes and the penis, the size and the shape of the penis and the testes, make sure both testes are, are um, in the scrotum and make sure there are no other abnormal findings in the genitalia. Okay, all right. And after when you finish your abdominal examination, you, obviously you thank your patient for being so cooperative. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, why are they? Thank you very much. Okay. And you help the patient to get up and you help your patient to come down, okay? Uh -huh. To come down, then you dress, make sure you dress the patient up. Okay, next. You help the patient to dress up. Okay.